So, this is about uh, the basics, okay. Um, so, when you see a picture, okay, when you see a picture, uh, all right. So, she is actually Lena, right? Her name is Lena, and uh, she is supposed to be, uh, you know, she is the one whose image has been used, I don't know, a zillion times maybe by the image processing community, right, for free. Okay, I mean, so in, the, in this world now probably it's unthinkable. So her face apparently, right, has all the kind of right features that you might need in order to evaluate algorithms. No longer the case, but then yes, right, there was a time, there was, there was you know, an extended period of time when, when let's say, right, people, people would simply say that if, you, if your algorithm works on Lena's face, then it's, then it's good, right? You might, of course, argue, but then the, the fact is, right, this image has been, has been used over and over and over. And in fact, like Lena was called, uh, I think 2015, uh, Vancouver, I think, right? When ICIP 2015, she was, she, was, she, was actually, she was actually felicitated simply because, right, I think uh, they just, they just, they wanted to acknowledge the fact that her image had been used so many times in the image processing community. It was, it was more like an acknowledgement. So she came and then, you know, so I believe, okay. So now when you, see, when you see an image like this, right, one of the things that you kind of notice is that when somebody talks about an image, then they say it's of a certain size, right? They say it's an N cross M image or it's a square image, N cross N, 512 cross 512, you know, 1024 by 1024 and so on. So what those things really mean is what is called actually a pixel, right? A pixel is really, you know, a picture element. When you say a picture, you mean really a picture element. And when you see images, typically, right, these are the three fundamental kind of images that you will see. One is a color, which is the first one. This is a color image. So, as you can see, so this is typically made up of uh, RGB components. The second is called really a grayscale image. And then the, th and then the third is called a, called a you know, binary image. Binary in the sense that it has only one and one and zero levels, this one. Okay. And uh, this one is kind of gray. Again, right, depending upon how many, how many uh, bits you use. You can have a you can have a grayscale image that has maybe eight levels, sixteen levels, or whatever, two fifty six levels, more number of levels, and so on. And then you could also have really a color image. In our in this course, right, the focus is going to be more on the more on two and three. The color part, uh, right? We won't we won't actually deal with except when we do some segmentation and so on. Okay, that may be the only time when we will actually use the color image. Otherwise, otherwise, right? We won't actually we won't really talk much about a color image. The grayscale and and the binary. Right, are, are really the are really the two images that will be grayscale mostly binary also right will be actually useful in fact a binary image is also very useful because sometimes right you might just have have some kind of a cartoon right and you are able to make out who it is right you don't even have to draw the entire uh, entire you know tones and all of this of especially if, if it's somebody famous we know that you know a cartoon diagram of the of that other person we know that conveys so much information so in that sense binary is also is also going to say very very relevant Okay, so we'll also see that. Okay, so a pixel. Okay, in that sense. Uh, okay, this will require a little amount of so. So, right, so when we talk about we talk about a pixel, right? We really mean uh, right in black. Okay, when we talk about a pixel, what we really mean is mean is a picture element. Okay, a picture element, and. Uh, <coughs> And, uh, and then, right, when you see a picture, there are actually three things, okay, which would which you would uh, which you would immediately notice. Of course, if it's a stand, if it is a still frame, then there are there are two things that you notice. One is one is a brightness resolution. One is really a brightness resolution, okay, which actually means the means the number of a number of uh, number of the gray levels, okay, which you are using, okay, which are there in that image. So the more the gray levels, the more smooth that particular no smooth in the sense that the more natural it looks. Number of number of gray levels, okay, in that in the in the image. Okay, this is what you mean by by a brightness resolution. Normally it is about say two fifty six. Okay, which means you use about eight bits. But that 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 is simply because of the fact that for the for a human being, right? Beyond that, you can of course go higher. You can go to five twelve gray levels. You can go even higher and so on. But then it doesn't seem to matter so much. Right, unless you have a specific application, okay, where you where you where you know where you really need to really this one quantize very fine. Otherwise, it's okay for a human being. I think 256 gray levels you can appreciate what is there in a in a picture. So most of the images you will find are kind of you know to have about 256 gray levels. But again, right, if you try to see decrease the gray levels and so on, you can start you know seeing some effects. Okay, like for example, 
uh, in this case, right? Let me just show you an image with. Uh, so, what would happen right, if you try to, okay, if you try to kind of play around, you know, with with the gray levels? So here is uh, here is a here is a case where on the left, okay, it's the same image, right? If you see the size and all, it's exactly the same. There's no change in the size. Uh, but then on the left, uh, we have used about 256 gray levels. Now in the second one, what you see is called a, a false contouring, right? It looks like the face has these contours, right? Especially if you see here and all, right, there, there seems to be some kind of a contouring that's happening, which is actually not there, you know, which is, which is not at all supposedly there in the actual image, right? So this is called a false contouring. So, so if you try to if you try to keep on decreasing the uh, number of bits, thinking that it is all right, right? It may not be all right because when somebody looks at the picture, then he starts drawing wrong inferences. So something like this is okay, right? 256, I mean, you know, if you feel it's, it's, it's fine, right? Whatever is there to make of that face, I can make out. And similarly, not just for faces, this 256 is kind of a standard accepted norm, hmm? 256 gray levels. Then the second one, the, okay, that, uh, that, uh, you know, that you might want to get a look at when you see an image, especially if it is a still image. So one is the, one is this brightness resolution, which, which of course, you know, which is something that, that, uh, you know, that, that you, that you immediately feel. The second one is what is called a spatial resolution. Okay, what is called a spatial resolution, and uh, and these two are completely independent of independent of each other. Spatial resolution has to kind of say do with do with how many how many sensor elements you really pack in an image, right? So it's like saying it's like saying how many. So for example, right, if you if you have if you have the number of sensor elements per unit area which is higher, then it means you're actually sampling a scene, you know, in a sort of a higher you know, with a higher spatial density. Right. Similar to the way you sample sequences in time. Similarly, if you want a good spatial resolution, you'll have to sample a scene closely enough. And right? if you have these sensors, uh, sensors that are spaced too far away, then it means you're not sampling enough. Right. So how many sensor elements, okay, are packed? How many sensor elements in in a, in a let's say it's a you know a unit area? Right. Or in a sense, you're talking about what is it going to say density that you have? Okay, so the higher higher your your this one density, then you would be able to see you know. So the idea is that finer details will start to appear. Otherwise, if you have if you have a resolution which is spatial, so you now it is independent of the other one. So the brightness thing is independent of this. You could have a spatial resolution of whatever, and then you could have a brightness resolution which can be four bits, which can be eight bits, whatever. Okay, so these two aspects are totally independent of each other, and uh, the spatial resolution simply you know gives you a sense for how much fine details are you able to see in that image. Okay, so here, for example, uh, let me just go to that uh, go to that picture again, uh, and uh, you know, so if you see the if you see the next one, okay, so here is a case where you see a spatial resolution effect, right? On the left, what you have is the is the original Lena image, and on the right, what you have is actually a spatial resolution which is at half the size, okay, which actually which actually means that you know what we have done is we have just expanded it to the say, same size as the original. So that you can actually appreciate as to what is going on, right? What you're losing. Okay, when you see the two, what you see is, I mean, they, they both have exactly the brightness resolution is identical in both. But on the uh, but the image on the left seems to be seems to be conveying more information in terms of fine details and so on. Whereas the image on the right, when you see it has this jaggedness, right? Uh, you can see that the hat appears a little more jagged than what it is, and so on, right? So you so you can see that uh, this is not probably something okay, that you would like. Again, if certain in certain problems, if you feel that this resolution is enough, you might actually go with it. Sometimes, right? What also happens is that you might you might actually try to solve a problem where somebody gives you a low resolution image like this and asks you, right? Can you kind of go from here to there? By low resolution, what I mean is, if this guy is let's say a phi twelve cross phi twelve, then this image is actually two fifty six by well, let's say two fifty six. It's like a resolution down by two, but it has been scaled up so so that so that the two right you can actually compare. Now you can actually ask. That can I go from 256 cross 256 to 512 cross 512? Right? That is that is also something that is you know that is of interest. So when you have a camera that is kind of cheap, right, and you want to implement some signal processing algorithms that will work on the image and take you back to a high resolution grid. Okay, this is typically not just an interpolation problem. This is more than that. Okay, so you can try interpolation and all, but interpolation works basically with whatever it already has. Okay, you can't bring anything new. Right, interpolation works with whatever is already around. Whereas, whereas, uh, no, unless of course you've already say oversampled or something, which we are not assuming. Okay, uh, so what is normally done is, uh, you know, should I, should, can I, can I, can I do it with just one image to, you know, can I, can I go like a single image from a single image? Can I go to a high resolution? It looks like a very ill post problem. Or you might ask, can I have a bunch of images taken all at all at a low resolution? 
but then they should be taken in a certain way so that they convey together right they actually convey information that can take me from that low resolution grid to a high resolution grid okay saves you money right saves you saves you on a kind of lot of things now the third kind of uh, and again the spatial resolution is independent of uh, like i said the brightness there is one more thing okay which is uh, which is actually what is called uh, what is called a temporal resolution what is called a temporal resolution this is not uh, this is not a factor if you have a still image but it's a factor when you have a video right so when you have a video uh, somebody says that that uh, that you know here's a video that is uh, playing at uh, 30 frames per second somebody says i have i have a video that is play, that is playing at a 1000 frames per second and so on especially if you have the sports kind of events right so you need a frame rate that is very high because the dynamics is very high it is a ball that is flying around and then right, you need to have a camera that is kind of you know capturing all that is going on so you need a very very high frame rate right so so in that sense that is called a uh, that's called a temporal resolution so it's like temporally how finely right i really i really sampling the scene correct so no, so on the one hand spatially means on that spatial grid how frequent how closely are you sampling temporal is like you may have a spatial resolution that you've already fixed temporal is like you know how finely so for example if you're doing a 30 frames per second that means every 1 by 30 second right you have a frame okay which you are capturing now you now in between if something happens right then basically you don't see that right because your your kind of grid is such that you'll sample at let's say t not and then you'll sample at c t not plus let's say 1 by 30 then you'll sample at t not plus c 2 by 30 and so on that is how you're going to sample right which means that any activity that happens in between you don't see it now in some some cases right you know in some cases it may not matter because when you know you know if it's especially if it's not a very high action video it is okay you know you can play at that rate and simply so and uh, typically a 30 frames per second is normal it is what most of your cameras typically have 30 frames per second and also it all this comes as a kind of a trade off okay you might ask I mean, you know what stops me right? I mean, you know by you know in terms of doing a higher frame rate and so on which I'll which I'll talk about in a minute but the whole idea is that you know especially you know when you want to go for a higher frame rate this means that this means that right, you wish to capture high dynamics okay in the scene so for example sometimes right i mean you might have somebody fires uh, fires a bullet right so if you if you want to capture the real essence of how it is traveling and so on you might need a very very high frame rate camera there are also there are also algorithms that talk about given a low frame rate video right can you actually use that to you know build a high frame rate okay again i mean all these are you know there is one on the one hand you could have a hardware which actually supports it the sense that you know you, you you simply invest more more money you pay let's say more money and then you say from let's say 30 frames per second camera i don't want that i need something which can do a thousand frames per second on the other hand you might say that you know i just have this 30 frames per second kind of a video but then if i wanted to do a higher frame rate can i do some kind of a signal processing which will kind of interpolate the frames ideally ideally what you want is something more than more something new okay, which happened in between but then it looks impossible to have seen right what might have happened but then you know in many cases it, you know, it's like saying that oh, if you saw a bullet go from here to there then you would assume that over the, over the bunch of frames if you can if you can get a see visualize that there must be a you know a trajectory you might actually interpolate and then the interpolation might also give you a feel as though you know you are able to see the see the actual bullet but in between if something had happened if that particular see bullet had gone somewhere and come back then of course you wouldn't be able to see it. but then you know physics is so good that you know these things don't happen that is why that is why you can still survive that you can do some interpolation and you know make somebody think that oh right you, you've done actually a good job but whenever such things happen where you don't have you haven't sensed anything right in between then you're really hoping that based upon whatever you have whatever things you're building up right is able to fill in those gaps right so again so but all these factors so the, the one important thing is right all these factors are you know you know all all the all the three above are you know independent of each other like you could have you know spatial resolution arbitrary whatever high uh, of a high size temporal could be something else right all these are, all these are independent of each other okay all the brightness the spatial and uh, temporal independent of each other now if you ask right i mean if i had a spatial resolution okay if i had to if i had to make it higher Let's say I have 512 cross 512, and then suppose you say that I want to go up to see 5000 cross 5000. What stops me, right? Is it the hardware that stops me? Really, is it like you know I can't make a sensor which is that small? Because uh, no, because what it will mean is if you want to sense something finer and finer, that means your sensor area should actually shrink, right? Because if your sensor area is itself so big, that means whatever whatever hits it, right? I mean you know you might be only you might only see the average of all those intensities, right? I mean you know you say think of a spatial resolution like this. 
Now, if I okay, now let me draw here, right? If I had a box, okay, if I had a sensor, okay, which was of this size, then whatever whatever are these light rays, right, that are going to fall on this, I would just get an average of all of that, right? I'll see some value. Now, instead, if I had sensors that are let's say you know that are that are smaller in size, in which case I can actually divide this into into four. Let us say, and I have a sensor, right? You know, which is which is which is only of this box, of this box. Now I can actually independently sense each intensity, right? There'll be a bunch of rays that will fall on this. I'll have a value for that. I'll have a value for this. I'll have a value for this. I'll have a value for this. That means I'm able to sense the scene, right? In a, in a more, in a more, in a kind of a finer way, right? I might so instead of just 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 saying what is the average of these two, these four, I might actually tell what each of those four is. Furthermore, I can go I can go even finer. I can say that oh, if I had a sensor. You know, uh, okay. If I if I had something, you know, that could that could do something like that, then maybe okay. Now if I if I could do that, then maybe I, I go I go even finer and so on. But then in the process, what happens is your sensor size is actually shrinking, right? Your sensor size sensor size has to shrink. Now the more you shrink it, even though you might have the hardware to shrink it, you might be able to fabricate something like that. All that is okay. But then there is one thing which kind of fundamentally limits, you know, how 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 much how much lower you can go, and that fundamental limit is actually posed by what is called short noise.